Now the wind has eased up a bit. We had such a storm yesterday and last night. Unbelievable. Andy, you should really think about installing a wind generator here on your property. Well guys, let me tell you what, a wind generator is um, is not worth building up here. We are here in the valley and these wind situations are fairly rare. Watch some videos of other guys having installed these wind generators on their property and you will see that they need a lot of wind, a lot of wind to generate a decent amount of energy. Even it always says, well, from two meters per second wind speed, you will generate some energy. Yes, of course, but it is tiny. A two kilowatt wind generator needs like 18 to 20 meters per second. This is almost like a big storm. And it's, it's definitely not worth here. Definitely not. But hey, we got something else instead. Blue sky and sun. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to the off grid garage in sunny hot Australia. I've got my work t-shirt on. This is from my old electric vehicle YouTube channel. Yeah, about the good old PHEV. Wow, wild times. Okay, in today's video, we want to have a look at the framing situation for our solar panel on top of the house roof. As you know, um, for a couple of days now, probably um, a week now, I have installed this one solar panel on the house there on a tilt system, so to speak. Well, it has uh, three hinges at the front and a piece of timber at the back to hold it up. And uh, with, this, with the wind for the last two days here, I have actually put a string on it as well to hold it down on the back <laughs> so it doesn't lift up. And the other three panels are still in the solar farm behind the pool here, generating energy about five and a half kilowatt hours per day, which is pretty good. This is all I need in winter time. But you may have also seen in one of the last videos how flimsy this solar panel is up the roof, only being connected with three hinges at the bottom and one support at the back. Because the overall goal or the idea at the moment is to have one linear actuator at the back and then lift the panel, lay it flat if, if the wind gets too strong and then lift it back up to the optimal angle to the sun. And as you know, I need these panels only in winter time here for three or four months to support the solar system here on top of the garage, carport and the big shed. So they need to work as optimal as possible and hence I cannot put them flat on the roof. Even I've got heaps of roof space there under the other solar system. But a flat angle is not good in winter sun here in Australia. I'm losing far too much energy. To get this lift automatic mechanic up and running now, we need to build a little frame under the solar panel to support it. It is very flimsy, it is very... What's going on here? It is very flimsy and wobbly and the corners are shaking and the whole panel is twisting in the wind then, which is not good over time. So they should have a proper mount. And I have experimented with a couple of uh, cutoffs here of these rail systems, how I can do that. And I probably have come up with some ideas now. Also, thank you very much to all these people who have sent me emails with their ideas. Some very good ideas and suggestions in there. Also, some of them were very tricky to build and very and a lot of mechanic and pulleys and ropes and stuff like this. But I want to keep it as simple as possible. So a simple hinge mechanic with a lifter at the back. This is what I'm looking for, actually. Okay, let's get started and I'll show you what I came up with. The width of these panels here, that's 110, 111. So if I do 120, this gives me a bit, that should be sufficient then. 125 times three. Length 340, yeah. Mm. These ones here, they're all the same length. Damn, the scheiße, jetzt geh hier raus. Scheiße! Ich kann die Erdkabel hier dran noch. Okay, so. Now have our three rails. Next thing is we need um, we need one of these panels in here, just over there. And 
Tell you what, filming all this takes a while. It's the third time I'm changing camera position. Oh, these pedals are huge. It is unbelievable. Crazy. It just, just fits into the garage. <laughs> and as we have seen on the roof, when we just lift it up now, see the whole panel, how it wobbles? It flexes and twists and I don't think this is good over time. So they definitely need some kind of framing underneath. They are not made for being hinged and then just support it on one side of the panel. They need some rails and a proper framing. That's where these um, bad boys come in. Zollstock. What we have done now is we have supported the panel with three rails underneath and used these end clamps here to clamp down the panel onto the rails and we've done this on both sides right so we clamp these rails to the panel as it is supposed to be so the question now is is the panel now less flexing as it did before let's do the wobble test again so this could be our tilt mechanic right but now let's see now see this has not done much it is a bit better but not super good so as i thought so this was almost expected that um, these three rails are not making much a difference it doesn't give it much more stability as before all right so next step would be to do some cross beams as well underneath i start with two and they need to be 230 230 centimeters 2.3 meters 2300 millimeters or this year if you are still an imperialist but now now the question is how do we attach these rails to the other rails underneath and here i found a quite clever solution because we now need to attach this rail to the other rail somehow and there's no original clamp mechanism which does that. Of course I could drill a hole through the whole profile and through this profile and have a bolt and a nut clamping them together. But this would mean we would need to do all this on the roof because, because nothing on the roof is actually straight. So I cannot prefabricate all the profiles here in the garage and then take them to the roof and hope they will fit. There always needs to be a bit of alignment, adjustment. This, this is just how they work here in Australia. There's nothing is straight. It's a catastrophe. So, and hence I came up with this double feet hinge mechanism like this. Yeah. So I've got one, one rail down here and the other one. I'll use this bin here as a tripod. Hang on. All right, now here you can see it. So this is the problem to attach this rail to this rail. And I came up with this double feet situation. And it uses these usual feet here to do that. So we slide these ones. So this is our normal roof mount situation here. So we screw this one down onto the roof, have the rail system sitting along there. And I'm using here again, one of these normal roof feet. I'm using one to, um, to be very flexible here with our so you can slide this this way and also the feet if it wouldn't be that tight i could actually demonstrate this shit here yeah now see it slides in this direction and it also slides in this direction and now it makes me very very flexible with my rail system here and i've attached them in a secure way um at this stage, I'm not 100% sure if I need to cut them off because they are, of course, they are a bit too high. Because what I did, I, I drilled actually a new hole underneath this long hole. Yeah, usually you have only this long hole, and you can adjust the height of your of your rails. But now I have drilled another hole underneath here to to be as close as possible to this rail because we don't want to have the panel sitting like half a meter above the roof <laughs> because of all these aluminium profiles underneath. And this and this actually seems to be um, let's let's uh, let's try it out. 
I'm not sure if it works. So, and I have six clamps here, Frankenstein together. They are they are basically two different systems. See, this nut is different to this nut here. See that? That's a different rail system than this one. But this is my adapter profile now. I can hear the fan coming on. That means we are charging with over 1000 watts into the battery from the pool, um, from the, um, from the solar farm. Jeez. How cool is that? Let's slide this one into the bottom rail. Yeah, nice. <laughs> and this one into the top rail. So there you go, first connection made. So far, so good. So this will be the frame, solar panel on top, clamp it on all four corners and we are done, right? Which, which should be far more stable than the solar panel itself. But I haven't thought about one thing, which is um, how, do I, how do I tighten these nuts down here? I mean, I can get in there with a spanner, and you know, this is just, ha, this could take forever. So I'm really thinking of um, turning these angles around so the nut is actually on the outside. But I thought this gives better stability because the weight of the panel is actually directly above this angle bracket. But you know, the, the panel is only 30 kilos, so it should be fine either way. Yeah, there's actually not much benefit because I cannot reach this screw anyway with a socket. So I have to use a spinner. So I can actually leave it as it is and just go underneath. Tighten them up. And hopefully it's good then. I made a big mistake. So I've got the framing so far ready. Got the solar panel here, but it will not fit on the frame. I cut, um, I cut these rails far too short. See, this outer rail there and this rail here is exactly in the position now where the screw row is on top of the roof. Yeah? This is the same direction as our roof structure metal under the corrugated collar bond. But I should have made these ones here a lot longer so I can move these panels and offset them a bit. It just will not fit. It won't fit. I need I need longer I need longer rails here. They're 2.3 meters and I need probably 2.4 2.5 so I can offset them a little bit. Damn it! Oh well, it's a prototype to be expected. Okay, get some longer rails and then we continue working. Shit! So I have now replaced uh, this left rail here with the with the longer one. So this is like 200 millimeters longer than this one before. And now you can see it gives me this offset here on this side. So the panel frame will be laying over here and over here on this side. And not exactly, because unfortunately the panel is exactly as wide as the rail lines on the roof. So this was my 200 mil mistake. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I think this is a fail as well because we don't have any support in the middle now and the long side here see that how it swings and yeah, that's no good back to the drawing board jeez <laughs> can't be that hard okay I think I got it so basically what I've done, I've turned the whole structure around. These three rails, which were originally underneath these two ones, are now on top. So they are supporting the panel in three different areas. And then we have two cross rails, with one of them having the hinges at the front. Uh, so far, that is pretty, pretty, pretty good, pretty good. Okay, let's put the panel on it and clamp it down because this gives then additional stability. Looking good. 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. All right, let's do the test. Oh yeah, oh yeah. It is still... <laughs> it is still wobbly. It is still wobbly, can you believe that? It still flexes a bit. Uh, yeah. Nah. I guess. Um, I guess. I guess this is why you use two actuators, right? Not just one in the middle, because with these long panels, they are over two meters wide, and if you if you support it only in the middle, you have this flexing at the corners then that's why people use two actuators to overcome that or even three with these panels maybe even three but i'm super scary that if one of them is not working and the other two keep pushing yeah i've seen i've seen the actuators which actually communicate with each other so they know if one is not working and then stop and where do we go from there you know where do we go i mean that's just insane ah, i haven't shown you the front i'm just using the feet of the tilt system so they will go directly on the roof like this. And then we can have our clamp mechanism here as well if you want to. Screw them down with uh, three screws into the roof structure. And then our pivot point is basically over here. So it tilts the whole frame. <laughs> I'm still not convinced about this here. This, this flexing I don't like. If we have wind situations like today, the panel will flapping all the time. And over time, I think it will just ruin your material here. They're not designed for moving around all the time. Not at all. Maybe, maybe I just go with a fixed tilt system. Put them in 45 or put them on 45 or 50 degrees angle and let it go. Okay, my friends, um, it is almost B o'clock and I'm back on the roof here, as you can see, considering Considering the, uh, the situation again, I may go back to the original design where we have two panels next to each other here on the tilt frame and I'm lifting the front feet up so there's a good gap, wind can go through and I would move these two panels here with the structure about one, one and a half meters forward. So we've got enough space here for the other structure down here. Usually the wind comes from the west here so it's pretty protected from the roof already. This is 80%, but if we get a big severe storm, it comes from the south. And this is exactly where the panels are open from. But if I cover the back of this one pair of panels here, we may have a bit of a windbreak then for the other row in front of it. <sighs> there are more options. Back to square one, I would say. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I, don't like the, I don't like the idea to have this actuator just in the middle and then having the panel flexing around like this shit here. This, this is just not good. And with two actuators, it gets really expensive if they, com if they need to communicate with each other. So I guess they developed this tilt mount here for a reason. We just need to get a better angle. So eventually we will get back here to the tilt system and I'll show you the final the final, final, final design then, and installation. Um, what I can do is I can share all your ideas now, which you have sent me via email, right after this video. So when I say goodbye, don't go, if you're interested and want to see what people came up with. All right, I think it's time to say goodbye now. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all your amazing support here on the channel, for all your very generous donations buying me a beer here in sunny hot australia and until the next video guys you stay charged stay safe and thanks again for watching see you then bye bye <laughs> i've thought about it so much here for two weeks almost two weeks since we installed this shit here and i'm going back to the original design but everything else is just it is not good enough leave it with me I'll uh, find a solution and here are your ideas you have sent me. Thank you very much for everyone who has participated and put some time and effort in it and sent me your ideas. Thanks a lot guys. I really appreciate it.
And guys, before I let you go, go, I want to share some of the ideas you have sent me via email. And I'm concentrating here on people who have sent me their own ideas. I have also received emails where people send me just um, links to other YouTube videos. Well, I have seen most of them, but here I was after your thoughts to solve this problem. So here's something Colin has come up with. He sent me his own drawing here and said, spring holds panel in place. If panel lifts, spring folds arm down. So this is a self folding mechanism he came up with to fold down a panel in case the wind goes under the panel and tries to lift it up. The whole arm actually then moves under the panel and folds it flat on the roof. That is an incredible solution, but I think it's very hard to build because the force of the spring needs to be very precise chosen for this exact application. And I think this is more like an emergency solution where in case of a storm, the panel falls flat down and then you have to go onto the roof again and manually set them up again. So loading the sprint mechanism again. So it's a very clever design though. I like it very much. Thank you very much, Colin. And here we have Rhino's solution from Raiska in Finland, where all four panels are actually mounted to one fixed bar and one hinge bar. And they are folding up and down in the same mechanical way. I actually didn't think about this. We potentially need two actuators then to fold down all these panels because they are fairly heavy. And we would have a rail on either side with an actuator then to move this all up and down. It's a lot of force, but it is a good and very clever idea. Thank you very much, Rhino. And here we have the next idea Lutz from Hamburg sent me. And I really like this idea a lot. It has some kind of scissor mechanic at the end. This is when the panel is folded up. You can see we have here and here like a scissor mechanic. And in this pivot point here, we have our actuator connecting back to the front pivot point of the whole panel. And then the actuator moves in and pulls in the scissor mechanic and folds down the panel then. That is a very clever idea. So Lutz from Hamburg, thank you very much. And the next idea comes from Jens. He lives near Kaiserslautern in Germany. And he has sent me this um, scan here. It's unfortunately it's on the other. It's um, hang on. What do we have here? Okay, there's the solar panel. There's a rail system and there's a mechanic here. Ah, okay, we've got it fixed here in the middle of the panel. And then this one here slides backwards. So the panel can actually fold down then. So there's one actuator in the middle. And we've got two rails here on the side and this whole mechanic slides back and forward in these rails. I'm not sure if one actuator is actually enough there because, um, because if something is blocking these rails, it gets jammed and then it gets out of sync. It has these rails with a wheel inside and this is the mechanic going back and forward in this system then. Hmm, that's pretty cool. I like it. Yeah, you can see it here. This is the whole frame connected to your solar panel. And then we've got these wheels here on both sides, moving back and forward in this rail system there. Very clever, Jens. Thank you very much. Also, thank you very much for your recent donation. Okay, I'm just reading uh, Dominic's email here and see what this is actually about. <laughs> then the actuator to the middle row of screws with a bombenfest mounting system <laughs> you came up with. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> Okay, so I think he was trying to emulate pretty much the mounting system I already have. So he said um, he didn't have an actuator to actually, to actually show what's going on. But this is what we have. Two front feet, one rail system over here, and then the tilt system at the back gets replaced with the actuator. And this lifts up the whole frame. Well, and this is exactly what I have tried today. And still the whole panel is too wobbly. Even I had it mounted on three cross rails and clamped it all down and then connected to two horizontal rails. It was still far too wobbly. I think the problem here is the sheer size of these panels. I mean, they are over two square meter large, but your idea will definitely work with a smaller panel. Thank you very much, Dominic. So here I've got an email from Ian and he has put some calculations in there as well. So he says basically your panel tilt problem may be viewed as an open the lid of a box problem. And there is actually a calculator for that with two actuators open the lid of a box. Honestly, it is the same mechanic. I'll have a play with this at some stage and then it calculates all the angles and mounting points for your actuator. That is pretty cool. 
Thank you very much, Ian, and I'll put this link under the video as well. And Radu has sent me these pictures here where it shows a metal sheet behind the panel so the wind can't actually get underneath. This may actually work on panels which are that flat, as it shows here in the picture. But for my situation on this roof, and they're standing up like 35, 40 degrees up, it would be a huge panel of aluminium, and I don't have any WAF for that. But thank you again, Rado, for these pictures. And here I've got an email from Bernhard from um, Austria, Australia, Austria, exactly. He says they have got summer and 170 amps outside. Nice, I'm jealous. And he has actually built such an actuator on his garage roof. So two motors, two motors are lifting three panels. But here I'm again concerned if one motor is not working and the other one keeps pushing. And we can also see a light sensor here at the side of the panel. I would really like to hear how this works if one of the actuators is not working. Ah, and he's got the panels in portrait mode. Thank you, Bernhard from Austria. And uh, Boomermatic has sent me this email here with his idea of a panel and an actuator. This has actually one crossbar. This was my initial idea. But then as we have seen today, the whole frame structure gets very, and it gets really wobbly and, and twisty and everything. So yeah, while this is a good theory, the practice is different. But thank you again, Boomermatic, for sending me your email. And here I've got an email from Rodney, um, but I have to download a 16 megabyte, oh here it comes. Oh wow, he has taken a photo of my video and look at this, I like it. So what do you have? We've got the same idea as someone else already had a Lutz from Hamburg. The rail system here with two wheels inside and then we've got the actuator just pulling this little cart actually here back and forward. And we've got two more mounts here. Ah. Then the actuator pulls this cart in and the panel falls down. But yeah, but again then, what happens if one of the rails is blocked? Yeah. There is dirt in it, a branch or leaf accumulating. You're putting force on this little cart then. And what happens to your tilt system holding up this panel? Your whole, your whole panel will then somehow twist. Yeah, here we can see it again. There's the wheel. This is the U-shape rail system. And then the actuator goes in and out. And I'm also not sure if the actuator is actually able to do that because we can use only half of the length of the actuator. So the stroke of the actuator may not be long enough to push the panel up far enough. Ah, here's another idea where we have a mounting point under the panel where the actuator is mounted on. I think it all depends on the stroke length and also on the length of this tilt. And he's got the option C in here as well with the scissor mechanic. This is the first one we looked at as well. I like this one very much, but I'm not sure if the panel is fully folded. The scissor mechanic would be very flat as well. And then we need a lot of force to actually get started. Yeah, there is, there is a lot of mechanic here necessary. And if something goes wrong, and we also would put a lot of force on this angle here, on this pivot point, because the actuator is trying to push the whole scissor outwards. And we only want a force going up. And I'm not sure if there's not a certain twist force on the panel in this area. But very good idea, Rodney. Thank you very much. And I think uh, two or three people have sent me emails to my business email address, actually. So I haven't looked at them yet. I'm not sure if I can find them, actually. No, I haven't. I can't. Um, I don't know where they are at the moment. Ah, yeah, I found one here. Bill has sent me this email here with the Tower of Power. So this is actually a vertical alignment of all these panels on a stick. We don't have any shading problems and we can lie them flat or, or put them on a tilt. But I mean, with these sizes of panels and put them up on a vertical mast, the wind load is then insane. Panels are larger than two square meters, as I said before. So I don't think this is an option for these larger panels. But anyway, thank you very much, Bill. It looks very cool. Ah, yeah, here I found your solution from Oliver. So he's using a car jack underneath the panel. Um, well, while this is some kind of scissor lift mechanic as well, I don't think we need that much power to lift up a panel. It's, the panel is only 30 kilos and it doesn't weigh that much that we need actually a car jack underneath. Oh yeah, here we can see it again. 
And this would also mean we would have a hinge down here and another hinge up here because the angle is changing then and a motor spinning the car jack. Interesting concept, but I don't think the car jack will actually go up high enough to lift our panel to like 35, 40 degrees or so. Well, we could mount it further this way here, but yeah, well, I guess it's an idea. So thank you very much, Oliver. And the viewer named Smoths has sent me this Lego tech example. And he tried using an actuator on this scissor lift mechanic. And he also talked about the difficulty to have a certain angle on this mechanic, because otherwise you just would push it away, but not lift up the panel. This is exactly what I was talking about before. So very good. Thank you very much, Moss. And we have Loni here, which sent me this graphic here, which I um, don't quite understand. Hang on, this is again the scissor mechanic. There is a there is a string over a pulley down to a winch. So I operate the winch, but what is this um, rope going to do here? I'm not 100% sure how this works. It may just work with the red rope here, not with the other one here. Well, here there is a lot of mechanic in this example. And I'm not sure if I would use a rope a pulley and a winch on the roof just to lift up a panel. So I think the linear actuators are actually ideal for these purposes. Thank you very much, Loni. And I cannot find the other email. Um, they didn't read the instructions correctly and sent this to the business email address. Well, overall, I received about 30 emails with ideas, links, and sometimes only text with explanations in there. So thank you so much for that. Very good ideas, and we have very smart people here in the community. So I hope sharing this information here as well on the channel helps other people out who are working and building such a tilt, automatic tilt system for their solar panels as well. Again, thank you very much for everyone who has taken the time and effort to send me an email. All right, I'll let you go now. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. Andy, just one more very small point about common usage of the English language. Oh well, here we go again. You regularly make a joke about the phrase without further to do. I've never heard this phrase before. In English, the phrase is without further ado. Who is ado?